One of the reasons why people really love the Angular framework is because it allows us to pass expressions. We put an expression on our HTML code, for example, the value of a variable, in this case, a variable called name, and it will show us the, variable, the value of that variable on the page. So as opposed to, say, using jQuery, where you would have to find the particular DOM element and change its value, in here we can just pass them as expressions. Now, where does all of this take place? Um, there's a concept called controllers. We're going to create a controller now. They are a particular type of objects in Angular that allow you to glue th what, what's going on in the view with changes in the model. We do that by accessing an object called scope. Whatever we pass to the scope is available for us to use in our HTML. So let's build that up to make it more clear. I'm going to start by creating a new controller and putting it in our module. We'll give this controller a name. It will be called Expenses View Controller. I mentioned that we need this scope object, so we need to pass that scope to our controller. The way you pass parameters to a controller is going to look a bit strange. I'm creating an array, basically, and I enter the name of the parameter as a string. If I had more parameters, I would have to enter them here, comma separated. At the very end of the array, we define a function, which is the constructor for the controller. And in here, we pass the object again, the parameter. This is where all of the logic of the controller will take place. Now, why are we writing this as a string and also uh, passing it as a parameter? The reason is, it's not relevant right now, but just so you know, the reason is because when you run minification algorithms, which are algorithms where all of the JavaScript is packed together, the variable names are usually replaced by letters. So this will be called maybe A or B or C, and then we'll lose track of what the original object was. So by passing the string, Angular will know, even if it's minified, that this refers to the scope. Okay, so let's define uh, that name variable. We'll put it in our scope. Everything that we, we put on our scope will be available in our HTML to use as expressions. So the name will be Pablo. And we still haven't attached the controller to our HTML code. You can have multiple controllers on a page. Uh, what you need to do is attach it to a particular DOM element. Whatever is inside of that DOM, DOM element is going to be the scope of your controller. So for example, if I attach the controller to body by using ng controller and writing the name of the controller, everything that's inside body um, will be the scope of our controller and we can access these variables from there. So if I reload the page now, we, we will see the name because basically what's happening here is we are attaching controller to the body element. Again, you could have multiple controllers on different sub elements. That controller is called expenses view controller. We defined it here. And inside of that controller, we define a variable called Pablo, called name, sorry, with value Pablo. And we show that using an expression on our HTML page.